Hello people, this is Jan Barsegel. Many of you probably know me from YouTube Shorts or TikTok or Instagram, but yeah, finally it's time to share some serious knowledge. And I actually just realized that this is my first video, long form video, where I actually will share some proper secrets, like proper, proper knowledge. And actually the main reason why I'm a bit late with these kind of videos is because I waited to be somebody in terms of results I've achieved before acting like I'm somebody. So what I try to say is I wanted to achieve good results before sharing something to people because I didn't want to just have some random gains and then speak as if I'm a, a master, you know. I wanted to make sure everything is serious and at the moment I can do weighted pull-ups with 70 kilograms for 8 reps, uh, weighted dips with 105 kilograms for 8 reps and I can do muscle-ups, a lot of calisthenic skills so and I'm mostly known because of my height and weight. Because as many of you know that in calisthenics, the taller you are, the bigger you are in terms of body weight, and the bigger your legs, the harder everything is in calisthenics. And yeah, this is me. I'm 95 kilograms now for the first time in my life. I gained a good amount of mass. And this video is about a very important subject. And in my opinion, if you watch this video, like, you'll understand how the system works fully because I'm not just an athlete who speaks from my personal training experience. No, 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 no. <laughs> In my case, it's not like this. In my case, I've learned from the proper Soviet legends in calisthenics and in powerlifting. So I spoke to the best people of the best. I learned everything mostly in Russian because I'm from Moldova. So I speak Romanian and Russian. So I gained the most real knowledge out there from the strongest people in the world who achieved the highest results in the world. And after practicing for a long time, going through many things, I gained the right amount of knowledge in order for me to now make videos and share the real knowledge. So the whole video is about how did I get more muscles? How did I gain muscles? I got bigger, I gained weight, but I did, didn't get stronger. First reason, why did I not get stronger? Well, I had a lower back injury for many years. It started at 16 years old. And I'll even attach some videos where I do some good performance. And by the way, at 16, I think I've achieved four minutes, not 10 out of 10, because I was not going fully all the way down. Like in a way, 90 degrees perfect. And on this video, on weighted dips, you see that it's like eight, nine out of 10. I could have gone lower on some reps. But yeah, it's fine. Come on, I was 16, I didn't know too much, but that's after 16, that's when the knowledge started to be more serious. I started to take knowledge more seriously. So yeah, the lower back pain, this. You know, I actually even recently thought, I didn't give up at all. This lower back pain has stopped me from training, especially doing weighted pull-ups, which is the exercise that caused me the most pain and which is the exercise that probably injured me. I had to stop training weighted pull-ups at least 70 times in my career. And never I thought of giving up or maybe changing the exercise or maybe, oh, I don't wanna do this sport anymore, I'll do something else. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I never even had this option. I never had this option. Stop? What? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Why would I stop, you know, it makes no sense. But yeah. Um, I went through so many massage sessions, different specialists, nothing helped. And then I went to one guy who is a chiropractor, but they practice a very crazy technique of chiropractors. They basically look at your spine and they hit you in the back. But of course they know what they're doing. And this type of thing has a bad reputation on social media because it looks crazy and people scream from pain. It's actually way more effective than you think. And after thousands of pounds, I spent so much money on massage, trying to fix the injury, nothing could fix it. I went to this guy, two minutes, he fixed everything. Two minutes, he fixed everything. It's crazy. So, yeah, um, the reason, the biggest reason why I gained weight and muscles, even though I didn't get stronger, and why this is so important, is because even I preach, if you get stronger with the right principles of training, with the right workout methods. It's impossible not to grow muscles. This is what I preach. And this is the truth, it's a fact. It's not an opinion, guys. I don't share opinions on this channel. I share facts and I tell you the truth. If some 
coaches don't agree with me, if I go on a five minute debate with them, they will ask for forgiveness <laughs> and they will say sorry to me because I know what I'm doing and I know how the system works more than well enough, okay? So the biggest reason why I still gain something is because I was doing sets until failure. And yeah, many coaches might have something against failure because if you go until failure in your sets without knowing how to properly structure your workouts, how many sets you need to do, how much rest between sets, how to progress the overload properly, what to do when you hit plateaus, many principles that can get in your way, you need to know how to deal with them. If you don't know, failure becomes ineffective. But if you do know how the system works, failure is very important. What I mean by failure is going maximum in your working sets. So yeah, this is what I did. And the thing is, the reason why I didn't get stronger is because I train. Let's say I do a training of weighted pull-ups. I do a training properly, boom, again, lower back pain, very intense. And I know I had to stop. So I stop the training, I go home, I look for solution, I try to fix it. I try to do this, I try to do that. I try to fix the injury. And then, okay, a couple of days pass, the pain is a bit gone. After like a week from pain, I feel like, okay, maybe it's fine. I will do a good warm up, weighted pull-ups again, pain. So yeah, what I did in those workouts that was very useful is that I didn't do weighted pull-ups in that training because of the lower back pain, but I still did sets, even body weight, or I took a gym machine and I did some good quality sets until failure, okay? And this is what gave me the muscles because when it comes to training until failure, first of all, you will get stronger pretty well. So you'll gain good strength and is the best way in the world probably, well, if it's not the best one, it's definitely top two best ways in the world to gain muscles, okay? And remember one thing, you guys are not bodybuilders. You don't need to train like bodybuilders. It's different. The way they train is different. Bodybuilders are not human. They don't have as much testosterone as a normal human. They have 10 to sometimes even 100 times more testosterone than a normal human. It's not normal. What they have going on is different. That's why they chase the pump, they take light weights, they do many exercises, they just pump the blood a lot, they train very often, hours every day. You cannot do this. You're a human, okay? You can't do this stuff. So the ways of training are very different, yeah? So again, I know, let's say the top 10 or 15 most effective progressive overload methods or the best training out there for progressing in strength and muscles, I know them, yeah? So I'll tell you that for natural athletes, doing very good quality sets with compound movements, focusing on progressing the overload, having very intense and again, good quality sets with everything planned, with very good diet, everything in place is very important. And again, of course, for bodybuilders, it's also important. They take diet very seriously, but with training, they just chase the pump, do many exercises, and that's it, you know? For natural athletes, it's not as effective. And the reason people think that the way bodybuilders train is the way you should train is because you probably heard the bodybuilders speak about the way they train, but they don't tell you to train this way. And if they tell you to train this way, it's because they don't know the system too well. Like they think if they train like this, why should you train different? You're also human. But they keep forgetting that they are not human, they are people on drugs, okay? Who are not human and they have everything, they're stronger, more motivation, everything is way higher than a normal human being. So they probably forget this stuff. So <laughs> yeah, that's why the system is different. You don't need to train like bodybuilders unless you take something. But we don't take something. Now here we're people who don't take drugs, okay? So and I don't suggest anybody to get on that stage of their life because it's not good. I don't know this personally, but I know it's not good because I spoke to even Olympic bodybuilders and I know how the system works. So yeah, I was doing sets until failure and this is what helped me because the last few reps in the sets, even if you don't progress in strength, is the fact that you went very intense of your maximum muscle capability. You did maximum of what your muscle was capable of in that training and one very crazy crazy thing that I will tell you, which is the truth 100%. This is intensity in the sets. By intensity in the sets, I mean how close to failure you go in that set. This is intensity. This is volume. How many sets you are doing and exercises you are doing in a session, yeah? Let's use two compound movements as an example. And the volume, this is volume, this is intensity. If the intensity goes up, 
the volume naturally goes down. If the volume goes up, the intensity goes down. There is no such thing as both going up or both going down. There is no such thing. There is a specific ratio, and again, there is no, I can't tell you the ratio in numbers, as in like mathematical ratio, but it's different, depends on the program. That's what it is about. If you go close to failure, you shouldn't do more than two free sets in an exercise, and you shouldn't do more than two exercises. The reason why, why is that? Because, look, look, I will break everybody's opinion who now is watching this and says only two exercises. What are you talking about? Wait a little bit, let me tell you something. So, let's use a pull day as an example. What's something that you use in a pull day, even if you try to train your back? Biceps, one muscle, yeah? So, if you do, after warm-up, after you did everything good, two very good quality sets until failure, your biceps are already dead. By dead, I mean they're very tired, okay? That's it, it's done, your biceps are done. You, you can barely straighten your arms. If you do the failure the right way. If you don't do it the right way, maybe you will not be so dead. But, so, the second exercise, you can't progress the overload. Like, your biceps are tired and dead, but it's still not tired enough for you not to be able to do the second movement, yeah? So, after the second movement, there's no chance for you to do the third exercise. Look, everybody can do three or four exercises per session, even if you go until failure. But, what's the key thing to why? It makes no sense and it's stupid to do more than two exercises. The main reason why you cannot do more than two compound movements per session is because you cannot progress the overload in the first exercise. So you just do it for no reason. That's the biggest point and reason why it makes no sense to do more than two exercises. The second main reason why it's not possible or it makes no sense to do more than two compound movements is because the movement is the same. For your pull day, if you do weighted pull-ups, you're pulling from up, down. Second movement, it's a rowing exercise. You're pulling from the front to the back. What else can your back do? There's no more natural movements for your back that you didn't do. So with two combined movements, you target all the muscles that exist in your back. Okay, maybe you miss out on 2%, but it's not that important. So you hit all the muscles anyway. The exercise is called differently, but you're pulling in almost the same way. Like this is the crazy thing that people go do a different exercise. For example, look, um, look, look at my reaction. I'm, I'm impressed. People don't think sometimes. You do weighted pull-ups. Some people, after doing pull-ups, they go to do a lot pull-down. <sighs> You're doing the same movement. It's the same as doing, instead of after pull-ups, doing more sets of pull-ups. Same thing. You're doing the same movement, but the exercise is called differently. It, it's for me, because I know how the system works, this is impressive. Makes no sense. Why are you doing this? Why you do more than two exercises if you do the same movement? You're pulling something like the angle is a bit like five, ten degrees different. That's it. It changes nothing. And, and your biceps. It's a one small muscle. You cannot train your back without your biceps. And this is dead. After two compound movements, it's dead. Why are you overtraining it for no reason? It, it, it makes no sense. If you cannot progress the overload in an exercise, it makes no sense to do it. You understand? And that's even if you rest like 5 to 10 minutes between sets or between exercises. This is dead. Okay, so again, if you think you can do more than two compound movements, try to progress the overload in all three of them. No chance. <laughs> no chance. And that's somebody like me who has been practicing this for years. And I know these methods for years because I've been doing them. And I can't progress the overload in three compound movements in a back day, for example. In two, you're capable of doing that. And one major thing, if you go until failure, rest minimum five minutes and maximum 10 minutes. You need to rest a lot because if you don't rest enough, all you're gonna do is ruin your next set by doing less reps than you could have if you would recover more. And by recover more, I mean just do more minutes between sets. So yeah, going until failure is a crazy thing and this is what still made me gain good muscles and again one thing I've said and I preach about that I didn't say in this video yet if your strength is going up your muscles will going up your muscles will grow as well and 
Some people like to say, oh bro, I know some strong people, they have very good strength, they are very strong, but look, they look skinny, they look like they've never trained. But, I look at those same people when they were weak, they were even worse, they looked even worse. If they look skinny now, being strong, they looked even skinnier when they were weak. So, even the people who look but they are strong, they looked even worse when they were weaker. So, again, it's same for everybody, it's just some people have this genetics. Or some people don't look like they train because they have a bit of high body fat. And those people usually, if they get lean, they will see and have some nice body. But not everybody has a fast metabolism to stay lean most of the time. Like me, for example. I've never in my life had more body fat percentage than now. And I'm 95 kilograms, so I always usually main gain. So I'm in a, a little surplus. But for me, a little surplus is like three to 4,000 calories, okay? So that's a lot for me. Um, so that I always name it because for calisthenics, having too much body fat makes no sense. Because fat, extra fat, it's like, it's just, you know, you don't need it. So yeah, guys, this is the main reason um, why I've been having this stuff. And I will tell you one thing. I made a guide recently. It's for free. And I shared some very good quality knowledge in there. So. If you want to take this to the next level and actually just take this more seriously because I know mostly it's young people on social media, man, if not now, when are you going to start training? If not now, now is the best time out there. There's no better time than this. And you see, I'm 21 years old and people think, oh, you need to work hard for so many years to achieve good level in sport. Yes. Is it supposed to take less time? Like, why are you stating the obvious? And second of all, after these years are past, they're in the past, that's it. These years have been going. You feel like everything went so quick. Like now, I've been taking sport very serious for the last six years. And you don't even feel it. I'm like, oh, I'm 21 and I've achieved very good results. You know, that's how I feel now. It doesn't feel like a long time. Guys, believe me, there's no better thing out there than being in your 20s in your peak looking good being strong too many benefits there's some benefits i will tell you but mm, i don't like to share this on social media but all the things in life in all the ways possible everything is getting better if you achieve good results and i really want there to be at least some people who watch this video and just trust me and imagine in a couple of years, they just suddenly remembered about this moment where I told them this stuff and they just come, man, Jan, Jan was actually right. I want this to happen so bad because I know this is true. Why would I lie now? It's my first time making videos where I share knowledge. Why would I lie? No reason to lie. I'm telling you the truth. So you guys, um, I plan to stay more active from now on on YouTube. I will see how things go, but yeah. If everything goes well, I'll post more YouTube videos. But yeah, now, I'm young, I need to chase goals, I need to get stronger, I need to get better at everything. I have big goals to chase so I can't get distracted with different YouTube ideas and all this stuff. Right now, I'm working properly on getting better and better. By the way, I'm very impressed that I forgot to mention this. Basically, I only didn't progress in my weighted pull-ups or in my pulling strength. That's the only thing that I didn't progress in for about three years, three years and a half. My pushing strength got stronger. I went from, again, like I told you, from like 75 kilos for uh, nine reps to, uh, let's say, 100 for eight or 95 for eight at like 20. But still, I was not very strict or as strict as I would be usually. By usually, I mean I was not so consistent because the lower back pain was not affecting me on weighted dips. So if the chain or the belt was pulling me down, the weight was pulling me down, I felt crazy pain on weighted pull-ups, but zero pain on weighted dips. But anyway, I was not so consistent because of lower back pain, because of massages, because of many things. Leg day, I couldn't do it properly because when I squat, lower back hurt. So in legs, no progress in strength, but they got bigger as well. In uh, pushing, I only had progress. So, and I also trained skills. So I could train skills at the time. So what I did, the solution I had in those moments was for me to do the things that I'm capable of doing for pushing and pulling, but not the things that cause me pain. You understand? So like I was training my front lever, I was training muscle-ups, I was training handstand push-ups, I was training planche, I was training skills, but not 
weighted pull-ups because they caused me a lot of pain. So I was still training, I was still finding some things to do. Actually, one cheat code that I found out too late and I'm very disappointed in myself that I found out so late, instead of weighted pull-ups, I could have done lat pull down at the gym and progress the overload and get stronger in that. And by the way, for the people who don't know what's a progress overload, what that means is a strategy on how to get stronger. For example, how many sets you do, how many reps, how you plan to add more weight, how you plan to do more reps. It's a strategy on how to get stronger. This is what the progressive overload method is. So yeah, basically I could have done lat pull down and it would cause me zero pain, but I found out too late. After like two years and a half, I decided to do lat pull down. Don't ask me why. I'm even confused myself why I didn't think of this. But yeah, if you've got a lower back pain, fix it first of all, go to a good chiropractor, go to somebody who will fix it, and then do your training and strengthen it. Guys, and I'm also sad that I forgot to mention this, fix the injury and strengthen it. By strengthen it, I mean make it stronger. Now lower back is like steel, it's solid. It's, I think, 10 times stronger than it was when I had it injured. I made it very strong now. I feel like there's no chance for me to injure it. Of course, there is a chance, but I feel like there's no chance because I made it very strong. So fix the injury and then start training properly. Cool. Everybody take care.